So let's start with the very first topic of this chapter. Advantages of steel as a structural material. Imagine you are traveling in the US. You might decide that steel is the perfect structural material. You would see an endless number of steel structures around you. It has been widely used because it offers numerous advantages. The few advantages that we will discuss under this topic will be high strength, uniformity, elasticity, permanence, ductility, toughness, additions to existing structures, and a few other advantages that will be listed in the miscellaneous topic. Now let's look at each one of them separately. High steel strength. The high strength of steel per unit weight means that the weight of the structures will be lighter. This property is of great importance for long span bridges, towers, and tall buildings. Lighter structures will also produce less inertia thanks to its lower mass, which is preferable in earthquake regions. Next is uniformity. The properties of steel do not appreciably change with time, unlike reinforced concrete structures. Let's take an example. Concrete undergoes creep and shrinkage due to loss of water, resulting in cracks, which is a time-dependent material property. But steel does not undergo these changes appreciably. Hence, the properties of steel do not change with time. As you can see, cracks in concrete. No such cracks develop in steel due to these effects. Elasticity. This is the most significant advantage of steel as a structural material. Steel behaves closer to design assumptions than most materials because it follows Hooke's law up to a fairly high amount of stresses. It does not show brittle behavior like concrete, means it is elastic. Also, the movements of inertia of a steel structures can be accurately calculated, while the values obtained for a reinforced concrete are not very precise. So now let's revise Hooke's law. Have a look at this image on your left. The first picture depicts a spring subtended from the above. It is at rest position and there is no mass attached. Hence, the, at the initial condition, F equals zero. Now let's attach a block of mass M, which, which produces a force F, which is equal to the weight of the object. As you can see, the spring extends by an amount X. So now the Hooke's law states that if I increase the mass of the block, say 2m, the extension of the spring would increase in a linear proportion. So if I attach two blocks of mass m each, the total force becomes 2f and hence the extension of the spring becomes 2x. Steel behaves like a spring under high loads. Permanence. Steel frames will last for a very long time if properly maintained. Although steels are prone to corrosion, which is a disadvantage I must say, research on some newer steels indicate that under certain conditions, no painting maintenance is required. See the image on your left. This is a classic way to prohibit steel from being corroded. This paint makes a protective covering between the steel and the environment and thus it prevents water and oxygen to penetrate the paint from the environment. This research preventing such paints results in lower operational and maintenance cost of the structure. Hence, it saves money. Ductility. The material that can withstand large deformation without failure in tension is said to be a ductile material. We have already learned this in our structural mechanics class. So when a, a structural steel is in tension, two things occur simultaneously. Number one, reduction in cross-section area, and number two, large elongation. To better understand this, let us look at the video on the upper left of your screen. That is a steel that has been that is being stretched under tension. You see right at the center of the object, there is a reduction in cross-section area. So this reduction in area is called necking of steel because it's in the shape of a neck. You will also observe that before this fails, there is a large elongation in steel. 
Hence, you can say steel is behaving a, like a ductile material. Now, let's look at the video on the bottom left of the screen. It shows concrete under failure. As you can notice, the concrete fails in a sudden, quick, and without any elongation prior to failure. Hence, it is hence it shows a brittle behavior in concrete, which is not preferable. There is one more advantage that the ductility of steel gives us is that when it's overloaded, large deflections give visible evidence of an impending failure or an inevitable failure. It gives those extra few moments or seconds for the occupants to leave the place before the structure collapses. Now let's talk about toughness. We will start by defining toughness. The ability of the material to absorb energy in large amount is called its toughness. Now toughness arises from high strength and ductility. Because of its toughness, <laughs> seal can be bent, hammered, sheared and to have holes punched in them without visible damage. Okay, as you can see the videos to your left. On the top left, the, the steel has, is being hammered and on, and on the bottom left, the steel has holes punched in. Now these things would not have been possible in concrete because if you try to hammer concrete or just punch holes in them, the concrete would tend to crack because the concrete is not ductile, hence it does not contribute to its toughness. This is the advantage of steel over concrete. Additions to existing structures. Steel structures are quite well suited to have additions made to them. This is possible because of the ease of erection of steel members compared to concrete, right? Steel does not require any curing or form work, so it is easier to erect and add to any structure. New base or even entire new wings can be added to existing steel frame buildings. And also, steel bridges may often be widened. Miscellaneous. Several other important advantages of steel are its ability to be fastened with simple connection devices like bolting or welding. Steel can be prefabricated in shops and then brought to site. So, it, so, it's, so its adaption to prefabrication is more than concrete. Speed of erection. Steel does not need casting and curing which saves considerable amount of time in, in construction unlike concrete. Its ability to be rolled into varieties of shapes and sizes is an excellent advantage which we will deep, uh, dig deeper into this in the upcoming videos. Possible reuse. Unlike concrete, steel sections can be disassembled and reused in other places without much effort. It also gives a higher scrap value thanks to its very long life. So here we have discussed all the advantages of steel as a structural material. We will now discuss the disadvantages of steel in the next lecture. See you there.